Hey guys, this is going to be a very easy and quick tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to see how I record my screen. And it's a very easy software. No, it is not Hypercam. It's something a little more professional and also smarter. However, you f if you can't afford the $300 program, as always, <laughs> it's in the description. It's going to be very easy because when you open it up, the folder, it's going to say Cam Camtasia Studio. Double click on it. It's going to say right this. Double click on that. And the MSI file runs as an EXE. To install this, all you have to do is double click on it. Right after you install it, you can either try it out or you could just click right here for the serial numbers to get the full version. Of course, after you download everything, it's going to look exactly like this. Now, don't be intimidated. This thing is actually pretty easy to use. So, if you've ever used any movie editing software, you can pretty much use Camtasia. You're going to see this button up here that says record the screen. You're going to push it. And then this little thing pops up. Now this little thing that pops up is going to be what you're controlling while you're recording. You push F9 to start recording the screen and you push F10 to stop. While you're recording, of course, you can pause it, you can stop it, do whatever the hell you want. But you get started on recording, all you have to do is push F9. After you record your screen, you have your clips up here. I'm just going to delete that so I can show you. Here's your clip that you just recorded. To use this, just drag it down. And it aligns everything for you. You don't have to worry about gaps and black areas. It fills everything up. Right after that, how I zoom in, you're going to go in, zoom in, and pan right here. Click that. You have this little box. As you can see, this is your clip. This is your box. To zoom in, just minimize the box and as you can see right over here I'm gonna zoom in on the Camtasia folder I'm making the box smaller boom I'm zooming in that's basically how you zoom in and the same thing goes when you're making it bigger now the thing is when you make a box and you zoom in on your whatever you zoom in on it's gonna create this thing right here in the timeline called a zoom keyframe now, what, if you just change your mind about what you want to zoom in, in the same slot or the same time frame as this zoom keyframe, you don't have to make another one right over it. Just double click it, and it'll lead you to the zoom keyframe, and then you can alter it again. So let's make this bigger. There you go. And it's not zooming in anymore. Do keep in mind that when you make a zoom keyframe, it's going to keep zooming in on that particular spot unless you change it again. So let's say I go over, over here to the 20 second mark and I make a zoom keyframe right here. I'm going to zoom in on... Is that, a, is that a nipple? I'm not really sure. Well, this skull thing right here. As you can see on my timeline, there's a zoom keyframe. If I go forward, it's still zooming in until I make another zoom keyframe. And you don't have to do anything other than make the box either bigger or just move it around. And as soon as I move the box, it just shows up right here. Let's make this a little bigger, though. Alright, so I made it big enough to capture her face. Made another zoom keyframe, like I said before. You don't have to worry about where it goes. Now, if again, if you change your mind, and all of a sudden, you don't want to zoom that close to whatever this is, just double-click on it to go there, and move it or alter it any way you want. As far as zooming in, that's pretty much it. It's extremely simple. Now, here's what I mean by it's a smart program. I'm just going to play this real quick. And then... Now the first thing you're going to do... When you... I'm going to mute that. I'm going to show you that it zooms in automatically by itself. You'll see that right here. Without me putting any zoom keyframes, it puts them automatically. And they also zoom automatically on what I'm focusing on. As you can see in this area. It just zoomed in what I'm talking about without me doing anything at all. Now, the zoom keyframes that get put in automatically are not always going to be accurate. So you might either want to remove them or 
check them. If they're in the time right time slot, you can always just double click on them and then alter them any way you want. But if they're completely wrong, just right click on them and say remove from timeline or remove all zoom keyframes which will get rid of all of them, even the ones you put yourself. I don't recommend that unless you know what you're doing. There is one weird thing about Camtasia though. When you go to titles and clips right over here, add title clip, but when you actually click on add title clip, it puts it in your timeline on the video slot, which means you can't have something going over the video. Instead of title clips, you want to use something called a callout. And it's pretty unique because you have all these shapes and whatnot, which are animated, by the way. I'm just going to use this arrow as an example for the sake of time. Type whatever it is right here, and it goes into it. When you click add a callout, <clears throat> there's actually other places on the timeline for it. Anyhow, you can choose whether it fades in, fades out, or, you know, you can even have two at once, three at once, it doesn't even matter. You can even choose its effects. A lot of things, it's pretty neat. You can go ahead and tinker with that. Now, when you do play the callout, I don't recommend that unless you know what you're doing. I'm going to mute that. They do do the uh, fade in and fade out. And you can also change the duration of it. Click on advanced. <clears throat> and this is your text area that you're manipulating. You can do a lot of things with these callouts. Uh, I'm not going to do too much on it. You can go ahead and tinker with it any way you want. But again, if you want to put the words and whatnot over text, always choose the callouts. And you don't necessarily always have to use an arrow. You can use a box or whatever suits your fancy, really. Another fun thing about Camtasia are the way they put the transitions. It's very simple the way you put the transitions because as soon as you click on the transitions tab, it shows you all your videos without the actual timeline and it shows you a little transition slot between the videos. It's very handy. Whenever you pick out your transition, I'm going to pick Pixelate, just go ahead and drag it to wherever you want to put it. Now this is video 4 and this is video 5. I'm going to put it right in between the two. If your transition time is too long, what you can do is right click on it and click transition duration. And then you can edit how many seconds. I want mine on two. And there you have it. You just did your transition. Hope this information was good to you. Have fun using Camtasia and use it wisely.